This industry is built with the most resilient, innovative, adaptable, and flexible entrepreneurs I've ever met. Obviously, we have some that never survived, and that sticks with me to this day and, and certainly affects so many individuals and communities across the state. But others just sat down and got to work real quick and said, okay, what do we need to do to survive in this? And so some of them did tear out their dining rooms and turn to to-go marketplaces. They sold to-go and meal subscriptions. They totally reinvented their business model because that's what they needed to do to survive and to fight to get through this, to get to the other side. This showed that one shock can roil the system, that we can get to a point where our grocery store shelves are empty this was the first time in my lifetime that I can remember at least where that manifested, that absolutely right, all of these things that we've said on an academic level about our food system playing out right in front of my face. I mean, did the federal government do enough? The short answer is no. Whether you're on the left or the right, I absolutely don't care. And I don't care what's happening down in D.C. and they can't come to terms. It was really this like every business, every person for themselves. It just didn't need to happen this way businesses were not given any guidance or helped in any meaningful way for so long. We were left to our own devices. Our employees need to be made whole. My take has been, if you are coming in to my restaurant and saying, I have to close because of COVID, okay, I'll close, but what are you going to do? Not even for me, what are you gonna do for my staff? If you just look at the economic data about how many of them went out of business and how many of them experienced drastic decreases in sales and have relied on these government programs, including the original PPP loan grant program and now the restaurant revitalization fund, clearly that industry has been hit. And the idea that we were all in this together, we're not all in this together. Restaurants were left with nothing with no plan, no guidance. Well, look, I mean, you know, uh, you can Monday morning quarterback this to death, but let's face facts, no one had ever seen anything like this. No one was prepared for it. I think there's a, there's a pent up desire to get out and get back to our lives. I can't tell you how much my wife and I have missed just going in and sitting down at a bar, talking to a bartender, meeting the folks sitting around us. For us, celebrations have been missed. I love my wife dearly, uh, but we've had enough one-on-one -on -one dinners to last a lifetime in the last year. I wouldn't say anything's changed. It just makes people realize that what they want in hospitality, that hospitality really will never go away. We'll always want that. We'll always crave that. And that's what we're seeing now is that people just want that hospitality back again. And hopefully you not only realize then the value of that to you, but you don't ever want to lose it again. That means that we do follow health protocol. That means that I do support my local restaurants, my mom and pop restaurants, these local businesses that maybe pre-pandemic where they were always available, always open, maybe it didn't register to me how valuable that was in the way I enjoyed life. It's interesting to phrase it in the way of being grateful for what's come out of this, but truthfully, we really are. There's a number of silver linings from the pandemic, not the least of which are restaurants that added innovative parts to their operations that diversified their revenues in a profitable way. It's allowed us to get off the hamster wheel and slow down and, and really look at what we're doing and where we're going. And it's allowed us to shift and change and be flexible in a way that we probably wouldn't have done. So much good came from it for us. It was painful while it was happening, but yeah. so much good. We are like a well-oiled machine now. We are, yeah, we are we, so uh, efficient. We're firing on all cylinders. On all, all the time, yeah. and so that part was huge. It forced us into becoming what we needed to be real quick. Just like that. We would not have lasted just by doing takeout. We wouldn't have lasted just by doing nonprofit work. It was a combination of kind of all the things. This will live in our memory for a very long time. I think transparency about their sanitation processes 
frankly, are gonna become a marketing tool. And the restaurants that do it the best, the restaurants that are most transparent and most innovative, just in simple cleaning and safety precautions, I think we'll have a leg up. Being responsible gets you to where we need to get to faster and in a better way with less injury to the general public. I think one of the most important changes here at Uni, but also within the whole restaurant industry, is there used to be this kind of, you know, if you're sick and you work in a restaurant, you just take a Tylenol and you suck it up and you go into work. Now, if you're sick, I don't want you here. Take time for yourself. And I think that's been really good for the restaurant industry as a whole. Another silver lining is that the pandemic forced not just restaurants, but all businesses to look at internal efficiencies and inefficiencies. We're going to have to operate lean. We don't have as much cash flow coming in. It's honestly helped put us in a position of being more effective and being more efficient with our processes and what we do and how we train our employees and how we onboard and um, processes in which we create food. It actually has done a lot for us to be more strict with ourselves and be more disciplined. We still are running a very lean staff. Because of the table side service being an issue for so long, we've kind of adopted this pseudo host slash food server relationship. Servers and bartenders became takeout specialists, production line workers. Patio season 2020, all of my hosts became servers overnight. We learned how to make all of that work with peanuts, with nothing. If this is in your heart, you can do this. You can make it happen, but only you can make it happen. You have to put your heart and soul into this, and once you put your heart and soul into it, you'll be rewarded. And you learn to grind it out, you learn to pivot, you learn to fight and continue fighting for every single inch until you get to the other side. I love what I do. This isn't called work, this is called love. This is called passion, this is called tradition. And I'm not gonna make my dad sad because he didn't come here and made a mistake. He came here and gave me that opportunity that he wanted to give to me and my sister when he first came here. The reason they came here is to show us a better life. And I'm not about to blow that off. I'm not about to make a failure out of that. I'm gonna do everything in my power to bring everything that they wanted to bring to America and it's gonna come through my hands. Because if a pandemic can't stop us, nothing's gonna stop us. I don't have a crystal ball to know when this is fully gonna get back to normal, but I do know that as we start to open back up and as we start to be more responsible and more conscious about how we interact and how we dine and how we uh, do everything, um, how we socialize, that we can just get back to giving hugs and handshakes and being convivial and being together and just make sure that we can keep this, right? It's obviously been a huge setback for the country, but at the same time, with any sort of situation like this, you end up learning a lot about yourself and about your business and about your continuation and what you want to do past this. So it's, it's not all bad, but there's no regrets, really. I think it's actually going to help us be stronger coming out of this.